are emotional beings. That is, we have feelings. Some talks about emotional feelings and visceral feelings. Visceral feeling is a feeling that you feel, they say, a gut feeling. But emotions, we are made with those, this capacity, this ability by Almighty God to feel. And it's very important, it's a very great capacity God has given to us because if we did not have that capacity, we wouldn't know what joy is. You wouldn't know what it means to be sad. There was, well, Star Trek, in, you know, at the time, Star Trek, some say Trek, Star Trek, years ago you had, the original Star Trek was, you know, there was this Vulcan they call Dr. Spock. And Spark was a Vulcan. He doesn't know what it means to feel. He was very logical. Everything was logic. He, he does not deal with feelings. He does not know what it means. And if we don't feel, we really cannot connect with other people. And we really, really cannot connect really with the world around us. God gave us those emotions for a reason. God made us like himself. God is an emotional God. God is grieved. God gets angry. God laughs. <laughs> God is an emotional God. But we have to be very careful with our emotions. We have to learn to master those emotions because emotions give, root, give way to actions. We make decisions many times because of emotions. And sometimes these decisions could be very bad decisions. Some people have made bad decisions because of how they were feeling at the time. So emotions must be mastered, otherwise it is going to master you. So we must master our emotions. More and more, Talking to people, I see the need for that because let me say it this way. Let me, let me put it up, up front one, one time is that a lot of relationships fall apart because people don't know how to deal with their feelings. Whether it is in the institution of marriage, where that's why people talk about marriage is a hard thing, you know, marriage ain't easy. Why? Because people. Like you and I, or you and me, sometimes have difficulties in dealing with our feelings. Is it a place of your work? People are bitter enemies. Towards your children. Towards you. Because we have not learned. I remember I went to CNC. They asked me to moderate a discussion concerning entire sanctification because that is the bedrock of our belief as a movement. We believe that God is able to cleanse people's hearts so that they could live a, a life that is above sin and we believe according to what Jesus taught that the root cause of all evil is not the devil but your heart 
Because Jesus said, out of the heart proceeds every evil you could think about. But one of the guys was saying, you know what? Even among sanctified so-called Holy Ghost people, the problem that we see over and over is in the area of people not being able to deal with their emotions. And uh, today, what day it was? Was it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday? <laughs> we went uh, to service the vehicle by Haki Motors. Met a Christian lady. I wouldn't say what church you're from. And she was expressing again among Christian people don't know how to really deal with their emotions. So the Bible tells us, and I repeat this because some of you will not hear, the Bible is a very emotional book. And I was reading Esther sometime this week. And I realized when you read Esther, there's a lot of emotions. The king was an emotional man. He was out of control. Everything, he get vexed. Make a decision. The woman didn't, the queen Vashti didn't want to, she refused to come when he invited her. He got so emotional, he said, I'll banish you forever. Don't come and see me again. You have a man they call Haman. Because, and I will mention that people hate what they can't conquer. Fear what they don't understand. So because this man, Mordecai, everybody used to do, you know, obeisance to him, bowing to him. But Mordecai will stand up straight. And because Mordecai didn't bow, the man got, the man had wealth. He said, this is all that would mean nothing to me because the man didn't bow. And he made a plot to kill, to wipe out not only Mordecai, but everybody, every Jew. But sometimes the pit that people dig, they fall into it. So the Bible says to us, we're going to deal with emotions. He said, listen. I repeat this, a fool gives vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly hold it back. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to wrath or to anger quiets contention. I want emotion. You ever see them hot tempered people yet? And everything, everything turned upside down. You ever see a hot tempered man or woman come home and is back and all one time? A man without self control is like a city with broken down and left without walls. City broken down and left without walls. So we talk about anger. The Bible says, soft answer what? It says, be angry and sin not. <laughs> the Bible says, fear not. Do not be dismayed when you are about to attempt something great. When you don't know what to do, we say, fear not. All it, because he told us, those, all these guys, Moses told it to, he told it to um, Joshua, and Jesus told it to us. He says, fear not. Don't be dismayed or discouraged or move into depression or, the, or give up. He said, the Lord will be with you. The word says, fret not thyself. Don't fret because of evil doers. Don't fret. Those are some of what we call the negative emotions. And then it talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice. It says a glad heart makes a cheerful face. But sorrow 
of heart, by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed. But I want to deal, and we were dealing the last time with this emotion called anger. And we said that anger is a potential emotion. Is a potential emotion. There's a reason for saying that. It has the potential to accomplish positive stuff as well as destructive stuff. I want to put a model or image in your mind. Anger is like a fire. Anger is like fire. And anger is like a seed. This is the two things I want to plant in your mind. Anger is like a fire. That's what I want to conceptualize it. Anger is like a fire. Fire could be used towards a positive outcome. As well, fire could be very destructive. That same fire that you placed in the under the pot, if you it is left to run wild, it could burn down your house. Same fire. Anger is like a fire. Anger is like a seed. Seed germinates, roots comes out, shoots up into a tree, eventually bear fruit. So anger could also turn, and I will speak about a little bit this morning, into a root of what the Bible calls bitterness. And produce fruit. So anger is an emotion that expresses itself or manifests itself, first of all, physically. Because when you get angry, I mean, run a little fast. When you get angry, you start to breathe fast. <laughs> your eyes, <gasps> your face contort. You become tensed. Your fish may be clenched. You may grind the teeth. The blood. What happens, and I, and I say, let me say, let me say it here, let me say it again. What happens when you get angry? We, we, we know, you know, how God made us, and, and I want to say we need to understand ourselves. Adrenaline is pumped into the blood. A hormone they call cortisol is pumped into the blood. That, those things are pumping the blood ready for action. Preparing you to fight. And when that happens, your immune system is compromised. Now think about that. You get angry every day and that's happening to you. Consider eventually you will get sick. Research has shown that a lot of sicknesses people go to the doctor for that they can't put a finger on is as a result of people who has not, is unable to control or, or resolve their anger. Even young people are falling down for a heart attack. Why? Because they are constantly getting angry over something. And over a period of time, it erodes you. It's an erosion. You don't feel it immediately. Well, it begins to erode. Eroding your system, your cardiovascular system. People, you know people suffer from, they, they just fall on death so and death. They get a stroke death so. And if you have unresolved, I'm running a little faster, but I'll come back to If you have unresolved anger, many people suffer mentally. I know a lady, a Christian woman. Hear the story. She married a man. When they were going for counseling, he says, uh, <laughs> The counselor said, um, do you have any children? He said, none that I know of. After many years, they got they were married. She's a sister, could play piano. They, she has talent. She could sing. She's working in the, with the government. And one day she came to me and I said, I don't know what happened. But you know, I found out the man have a child.
But the reason why the man said none of the new was because he never owned up to the child. Everybody was going in the well, so he didn't claim he didn't own the child because everybody bucket was going in the well. I guess they didn't know they had um, if they had DNA testing at that time, they might be able to do that. So some woman came when she was going to some classes and told her about the man of a child. And that raised her pressure. And constantly she believed what she was told. She was angry. And then one day, all I know, this, they said St. Anne's. She's, she's admitted to St. Anne's. And then I remember meeting her one time. She said, you see they're coming for me? They're coming for me? They're coming for me? You see them across it? You see them across it? You see them across it? Watch, watch, watch. They're talking about me. They're... She gone mad. Mentally ill. And then I begin to understand what, you know, the, the Jesus, the Bible is a very interesting man. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. There's a reason for that. Let not the sun, I'm running a little bit here. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. There's a reason for that. Now, when I observe with God, God does not explain everything to you in detail. But knowledge shall increase in the world. God leaves something for us to do, to discover for ourselves. That's why when God made Adam, he didn't tell him, he did an iron, he said, you name it, use your brain. God didn't tell man that, you know, you, you, uh, um, um, you have a stomach and with intestines and large intestines and eat, eat vitamin A. No, he didn't tell us that. He just said, eat this. But then as time goes on, we discover how, why he said it. And there's a reason why God says this emotion called anger. He says, he says, be angry and sin not. And the truth be told, there are angry people and maybe some of us are here. Anger is basically a relational emotion. It has to do with the fact that somebody you feel has treated you unfairly or somebody has hurt you or somebody has disappointed you or some or you feel this or, or, or you were criticized or somebody didn't do what you told them to do to disappointment or somebody didn't meet your expectations. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Why are people angry every day? If, so, if somebody, if somebody spend, if, if somebody must be them 10 o'clock and they come 5 past 10, they're angry about that. Some people get angry over petty things. People have pain that doesn't go away. They're going to they take Ben Juice Bam, Tiger Bam, 10 injections, and it doesn't go by because they are harbored. They are angry about something. And anger is an emotion that must be expressed. It must be expressed. Otherwise, if it doesn't express, if it is not expressed, <laughs> it, could, it could come like they talk about if you implode or you will explode. Let me say this, that anger could be expressed. The reason why, and let me run, I'm running here a little bit. Uh, well, let me read this for you. The Bible says, the Bible says, tell you, still on the pot. The Bible says something about um, anger that I, you know, it, in terms of, and I, you know, it is there all the time. How people could become sick. One of, the, one of the effects of anger. It says that the Bible defines it said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Somebody says this results in depression and all kinds of self pity. pity. Things didn't go your way, man. It didn't happen. A merry heart do not good like a medicine. Now you hear that? A merry heart 
Now the Bible is not a scientific book, but of course it is making pronouncements that we will discover and have discovered over the time. He said, Mary Hart is like, like medicine, a happy person, joyful person. A broken spirit dried the bones. How oh, Solomon knew that? How uh, dried the bones? It affects you. Envy rottens the bones. <laughs> she put away all these forward mouth, the perverse lips. Put away these things that results in bitterness and resentment. Put away these things. On, a, on a next time, on a next time, I will talk a little more in detail about this thing. But let me say this to you, or to us: anger. Therefore, the Bible encourages us to put away anger. Paul, in this chapter in in, in Ephesians four, he says, "I want to teach you how to deal with your anger." He says, anger must be acknowledged. Anger must be owned. Anger must be resolved. So he said, be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. So what he said, he said, listen, don't, don't deny your anger, you're angry. Some people could deny, you're angry, no? You know you're lying. Don't deny it. Don't suppress it. Don't leave it unresolved. Because if you do that, you will be affected. Paul is saying, anger must be dealt with. He said, don't let the sun go down in right us. Don't go and sleep. Be angry. Don't want to bed being angry with your husband, your wife, your, your co-worker, your whoever. You don't want to bed being angry. He said, anger must be dealt with speedily. In the church, sad to say, and Paul was talking to the church people, he wasn't talking to one, he was talking to Christian people. So they are anger, angry Christian people. Angry people of God. He said, otherwise, and observe it and quickly, and I'm going to show you just now, if you're given, you will give place to the devil. Some people blame the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, but they don't know the devil. We have given room for the devil to come in and interfere and destroy a relationship with our husband, our wives, or with people. Because one of the things anger does, it destroys relationships where it is unresolved. You know what Jesus said? Let me tell you what, let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, not Cotty, Jesus. He said, reconciliation, resolution, According to the new word, resolution. Don't look for the dictionary, not there. That's my word. I remember when, when we were doing um, a certain class in school. Well, I really call it for my little King Jr. I said, he says, he says, gradualism results in instantialism. That results in do nothingism. And the teacher put, you're calling a new word. I, 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 So let me afraid you can make words too. Listen, I'm, I'm learning over the years. Do not <laughs> listen. The, nobody has a patent on anything in the world. Nobody. It might be accepted what you say. Maybe you, you know the coin you will every, every every time. I know invitation you're gonna invite now. That's a new word. So he said it must be dealt with. 
And there's a reason for that. It said the longer we hold on to anger, the more agitated we become. <laughs> and the action is always ugly. When you go to sleep, when you want to sleep ang angry, your brain, is, we have to learn about ourselves, eh? One of the things we have to learn about ourselves. Learn about yourself. Learn about how your body works. Well, that way the doctor come and tell you well, he know how your body works. So he given why, why are you going to the doctor? Because you believe he know how your body works, right? Know how your body works. Everybody should study biology and psychology. Study your mind. How it works. Study of your, your body. Because it's anatomy, physiology. Study that. Because all of your problems has to do with something maybe dysfunctional, not working right. And, and, and I love, you know, a lot of people missed it. Good food sharing there on last Monday, but a lot of people missed it. Now, <laughs> when you go to sleep, the first thing that happens, you can't sleep. Because you're hungry. Whole night they're tossing. And the, your, your rest is so important because when you go to sleep, your body, your brain, they start to do what, you, you ever get up in a, uh, when you go to sleep and they can't remember something. And then when you get up next week, you remember it. You see the brain, when you're at rest, the computer is starting to do it. Okay, fine. All of that going in your brain. That's why people won't, <laughs> let me not say that because my wife accuses me of it. People don't sleep a lot. Forgets a lot. They become irritated a lot. Now when you're angry, that happens. And when you're angry, what begins, when, when you go to sleep, uh, 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 you know, angry, it makes it difficult for you the next day to deal with the issue. And over a period of time, anger turns into hate and bitterness. Anger turns to hate and bitterness. So Paul said to us, watch it well, not cut it. Paul, Ephesians 4, where we just read. Watch the last two verses. Let all bitterness possible put it away. He didn't give it in what I would call the chronological order or the logical, or, or the, or, but of course it might be logical. It is logical. He says, he says, let all bitterness, because anger precedes bitterness. And anger and wrath, that's a, that's a word. And, and anger and clamor and even speaking of some version was a slander be put away from you with all malice. When you, when you have unresolved anger, when you don't resolve your anger, what begins to happen to you? This is what happens to you. You will become bitter. And bitterness is defined as anger and disappointment of being treated unfairly 